Uh, this is our digital literacy virtual exhibition and our focus for the afternoon is going to be talking about smartphone technologies and things that are helpful to know and valuable to take advantage of if you're an older adult or a new user uh, to any brand of smartphone that you might find. So without further ado, I, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what our project was about, and then I'm going to pass it over to my friend Wendy. Uh, but first, I just want to say that the whole reason why we focus on digital literacy is because we want to help people feel comfortable and confident with technology, because it's an essential skill for everyone to master, like reading and writing. We all need to feel comfortable using a, a device to go onto the internet so that we can communicate with the people around us, find information, and essentially feel like we're involved in our modern society. Wendy, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. Uh, we're delighted to uh, provide this opportunity um, for you to learn more and to enhance your digital literacy skills. And um, I would like to acknowledge that um, this event today and our digital literacy club um, that has run for the past year and we anticipate will continue to run um, it's a, a very, very valuable program that we are able to offer um, to support you in your um, digital literacy uh, skills training. And this particular uh, project uh, for the past year was made available by funding from the Seniors Community Grant, which, was, which is under the umbrella of the Ministry for Seniors and Accessibility. So we are very grateful and thankful for the funding that we have received from, um, from that source. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this back on to you now, I believe, Chris, or is that Kat? Uh, I, can, I can help do the transition too. Uh, my friend Kat's gonna say a little bit about what the Digital Literacy Club was all about and tell you a little bit about what our Digital Literacy Virtual Exhibition is about too. First of all, the goals of the Digital Literacy Club were to help us to learn best practices when we go online to keep ourselves and our finances safe, to learn the basics of our personal device, it's way more than just making phone calls, and also to feel safe and in a trustworthy group of people where we were supported, where we had the opportunity to ask questions and get opinions about the best way to use our devices. And it worked really, really well. So how it worked was there were three groups of us and it was about 12 people in each group. And we attended uh, the, our uh, learning sessions via Zoom. So we were doing virtual learning. So that's our like step one, learning to use Zoom and, uh, and becoming a virtual student. And we got uh, different topics each week. It was very informative and other people's questions were just as helpful to me as having the opportunity to ask questions myself. And I'm not the only one that really felt good about this project. We had lots of comments um, about helpful ideas, promoting awareness, helping us to develop confidence, and learning that as seniors, we're still powerful learners. That's pretty awesome. So today, we wanted to share all the things that we learned during the Digital Literacy Club. And it's, we've got quite a packed hour for you here. Uh, we wanted to share what we learned along the way. And we hope that we can also increase your confidence in reaching out and learning how to use your devices. So I hope you enjoy what we have to say today. Just to take a moment, everybody, I wanted to recognize the team of tech tutors that helped put all of this information together for you today. So on the screen, you see my friend Beverly, Viola, Jackie, Sivagini, Florida, and Kat, who you just saw on camera there. And you're going to hear from all these fine ladies throughout the afternoon. Uh, what are we going to talk about, you might be wondering. Well, there's a couple of things that we thought we'd pinpoint in on. We wanted to talk about accessibility settings for your smartphones, both 
Apple and Android phones are going to be talked about. We wanted to discuss the idea of placing orders for groceries over the internet, because that can be a very convenient and valuable thing to plug into when you need to. We wanted to talk about booking transportation options and the variety of different ways that we can do that when we're living in the GTA. We wanted to talk about digital healthcare tools and getting everybody accustomed to the idea of thinking about connecting with their healthcare professionals using technology devices. And then finally, uh, we're going to pinpoint some of those ways that people are, in fact, connecting with their health professionals. So let's push this forward. Uh, the first person that's going to be sharing with us today is Sivajini. Thank you, Chris. I will be talking about the accessibility and setting on your smartphones and tablets, which we will be going through the demonstration. As we go through this demo, you may want to follow along. The blue one is the Android symbol and the gray one is the Apple symbol. For Android users, there may be slight differences with your device. To start, find your setting app according to the symbol on the screen. Now, I will be showing you an easy and a quick way to enlarge text size on your phone. Let's see how we can get the text messages, emails and other texts on your phones larger as they are essential to us. This will be helpful to the seniors like us who may need larger print. On the screen, you will see the steps of how to do this on Apple devices visible on the left side and Android devices on the right side of the screen. First, we have to go to the setting app on your smartphone. Once you have tapped on it to open the app, you may see a list of options. You may have to swipe up to see the list that continues below. Swipe until you see display and brightness or just display and tap on it to select it. Now in the display section, swipe up to see text sizes and on Android it will be the font size and tap on it. We can see a slider button at the bottom of the screen which can be moved to the right or left making the text larger or smaller to your desired size of the text. Thank you. Next, setting demo by Beverly. There is a great feature on our smartphone, which is screen out or auto lock. I will be discussing how to adjust your screen out on the iPhone and Android phone. When you first get your phone, the default setting for the screen auto lock and screen timeout will turn off your screen in 30 seconds of inactivity. This can be very annoying, especially if you're baking a cake and you're looking at the recipe on the phone. Even if the timer is on, the phone still goes to sleep. Fortunately, you can adjust your settings to keep your phone screen on longer, and here is tap. Tap settings. Tap display and brightness, tap auto lock or screen timeout, and choose the time that suits you best. If you choose never, your screen will stay on all the time unless you manually lock or put the screen to sleep. Also, it's not safe because if someone picks up your phone, they have access to your app. That's great. Thanks so much, Sivajini and Beverly. I just wanted to confirm for those of you that might be using an Android phone that in addition to screen timeout, they also sometimes use the term sleep to represent the same thing. So just to confirm, auto lock, 
screen timeout and sleep, they would be the same feature on a variety of different devices. So please be familiar with all three of those terms. Also, I just wanted to confirm as well, if you were watching a video, maybe Netflix or a YouTube video, and you had that auto feature or that auto lock feature rather turned on, it would not engage while you're watching a video. So please know that that experience will go interrupted and it's not going to continuously be shutting off your screen while you're enjoying a program or a movie. Now, I also thought that it might be beneficial to reiterate what Beverly was saying about having your auto lock or your screen timeout set to something that's not never. We don't want to have never set because in addition to what Beverly was talking about, we could also by accident put the phone in our pocket or in our bag while it's unlocked. And now maybe you're going to pocket dial somebody by mistake, or you could start up that Netflix video and begin to watch it while it's sitting in your bag, which could in fact use up some of that data that you're buying from your internet service provider, or rather your cell phone provider. So please keep that in mind as you're thinking about using that auto lock feature. Something else that wasn't discussed that's also a display feature that perhaps you'd like to adjust it's called dark mode or dark theme on the android product now i'm using an android here and again this is a display setting that you're going to be able to pull up in the settings app and you can see the red rectangle around a switch and when i flip that switch it's going to turn on dark theme and what we're going to notice is that the light background with the dark text is going to change to a dark background with a light text and for me personally and for other people that i've worked with before sometimes this dark mode is easier for us to see in the evening when our eyes are getting tired and we're trying to get ready for bed so that's why perhaps you might want to turn that on give it a try and you'll find out if you like it for yourself with all that, I'd like to pass it on to my friend Kat so she can tell you a little bit about some helpful audio accessibility settings. Hi folks, I'm called Kat and I'm pleased to share how digital literacy can make life better, especially for people like me who live with disabilities. The voiceover on Apple or TalkBack on Android app is your AI assistant. Turning this app on allows you to get a verbal description of the highlighted button or item on your phone screen. She will tell you what it is, what it does, and what gestures are needed to use it. Check out this video. Weather, widget, ESA, 14 degrees, mostly cloudy, high of 17 degrees, low of two degrees. Actions available, calendar, Wednesday, May 18th. Double tap to open. Calendar, May 2022. Back button. Months selected. Today, Wednesday, May 18th. Two events. Button. Christine's birthday. All day. Calendar. Doctor's appointment. From 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Calendar in four hours 22 minutes this app comes already loaded on your phone you can open this feature from your settings menu and you'll find it in the accessibility features or the accessibility category depending on whether you have an apple or an android phone once you've turned the app on you can turn voiceover or talk back on or off by hitting your home button twice Aren't those super helpful features on your smartphone? Now, when I start thinking about additional helpful things that are already included on your smartphone, I start thinking about Bluetooth and the idea of Bluetooth connectivity, which really means connecting one device to another device with no wire. Yeah, so it's a, a wireless connection between two different devices. So a modern hearing aid, as an example, would be a little headphone essentially that is hooked up directly to your smartphone, which means anything playing through your smartphone is going to play through your hearing aid. That would be similar to the Bluetooth headphones that you have. It would be similar to the Bluetooth speaker that perhaps you keep in the backyard or you have in the living room to play your music. Maybe it's the same 
Bluetooth that you use in the car so that you can do hands-free between your smartphone and your car speakers. Perhaps you wanted to buy an extra Bluetooth keyboard so that you could hook up something a little bit bigger so that you can do some traditional style typing that shows up on the screen of your smartphone. Maybe you're somebody that has a smart watch that's collecting things like the amount of steps that you take in the day, or maybe how your heart rate's doing on a given hour. And it's giving all of that information over to an app on your phone via Bluetooth. And then finally, I'll leave you with the idea that there's even water bottles available that have Bluetooth built in so that they can sense how much water is still in the bottle and then tell the person via the app installed on their phone that they should probably take another drink of water. It's, it's truly a remarkable thing to have this notion of Bluetooth connectivity available to us all the time now with all of our different devices and your smartphones got that built right in. Now, I think it's time that we move on and meet those tech tutors once again, so that they can tell us a little bit about some apps that are pre-installed on our phones and also some that we might want to download for free off of an app store. Hi, this is Jackie. I am delighted to tell you about one of the most used apps that seniors enjoy, the camera app. It can be found on your Apple and Android devices. Tap the camera app to open. To zoom in, place two fingers on your screen control and push away. Take pictures of your physical health concerns to show your doctor during appointments. Also, take pictures of places you cannot reach when something isn't working. Take videos to show someone later or take videos that can be kept as memories. Hi, my name is Viola. And I'm here to share how we can make use of the Note app. Here's a, an app on our smartphone and our tablet. So why not make use of it? It's so easy to use and right at our fingertips. We can jot down text-based messages on our Apple and Android devices. The Apple, the app may called notes, but Google keeps. How many times do we go shopping and can't find our shopping list in our purse or pockets? This app is also helpful to make our grocery list because I bet we all bring our phones with us to the grocery store. We may find it beneficial to take notes when going to the doctor's office. The doctor may give you instructions on how to take few or new notes of certain medication. Of course, we may not remember everything the doctor tells us. So you can quickly make notes on your devices. It doesn't require pen and paper. We can also use it to prepare questions we may have for the doctor or note down any symptoms you have. And so we won't forget at the doctor's office. It's so easy to get sidetracked and not remember what you want to ask the doctor. But with few clicks on your smartphone, your personal notes and can be at your fingertips. Here is another free app on our smartphone devices, which can help us record an audio recording. We can use this app when you are receiving verbal instructions, such as or from our pharmacy. They may give us special instructions about medications, instructions and side effects. When we are receiving verbal appointments, it may be overwhelming to remember, but with this app, we can always go back and listen to what was said. Of course, 
we must remember to ask permission before we record anyone. By using your recorder app or the voice memo app, it may take the pressure off typing. Of course, not all of us are tech savvy. This is so helpful. We won't miss any information or instructions given. Another reason we may use it to record brilliant ideas when they pop up while you're relaxing in the park. We want to listen our own voice and sometimes sweet songs of birds singing. We might want to recite a poem and be able to hear it afterwards. The translation app is a really helpful app to use, and it's on many smartphones already. If it's not on yours, you can easily download it for free from your favorite app store. You can instantly translate spoken word conversations or written documents using this app. Now that app could keep you safe for sure. Those really were some remarkable apps that we have available on our smartphones. I'd like to say a little bit more about the Google Translate app though, because it's got a little extra functionality that I think you'll find value in. The first thing I wanted to point out was that you can type in whatever it is you'd like to have it translated into another language. So here in the example, you can see on this Android phone that I have here, I wrote in, I would like a large black coffee, please. And right below that, it translated it instantly into Spanish because you can see I have English to Spanish selected as my translation. Now, what I can do as well is I can push on that Spanish translation and it will expand the options. What else can I do with it, you might be thinking? I can push the speaker button that I've circled here in red and it will read out the Spanish translation from the speaker on the phone which means if I'm at a restaurant and I'm trying to order that coffee, I can simply type in my request. And then when it's translated on the screen into Spanish, I can push the speaker button and it will play the sound out and speak it properly with proper pronunciation to the server that's trying to help me while I'm on vacation. It's truly a remarkable thing. Now I can also think about touring around the world, having no barrier to entry when it comes to not knowing the language, it's really amazing. If I go back and I start choosing what language would I like to translate into, you can see simply by touching on this Spanish option here, it will generate a list of all of the possible languages. There's 133 in total, and you can download whichever one you'd like so that it's available moving forward on your phone so that you can do all the translating you would like on the fly. Now, as we talk about removing barriers, I think it's an appropriate time to throw it back over to Kat so that she can tell us about a truly incredible app called the Seeing AI app that's for anybody with visual impairments. The Seeing AI app uses your phone's camera to provide a verbal description of what your camera is viewing. It reads documents, describes people and scenery, identifies money, and you can use the Seeing AI app to look at product codes, and it'll even allow you to get access to nutritional information about those products. This app even read a letter to me that my auntie wrote me in handwriting. I'm so impressed with this. You can download this app free from your favorite app store, and this is brought to us by Microsoft. There are many grocery delivery apps out there, but we decided to talk about Instacart because unlike other grocery delivery apps, Instacart allows you to shop from any stores in your area rather than just being a product of one store. Instacart lets you shop by store, by category, or you can search for specific products on the app. To use Instacart, you must first download the app from your favorite app store and you can download this app for free. 
Then you need to set up your account by filling out the information on your customer profile and select a payment method so that you can pay for your groceries. You can then stay tuned for notifications from your personal shopper regarding issues with your order and the app will even send you a notification to let you know when your delivery is on its way to you. Beverly's going to tell you about another one of our favorite grocery delivery apps. Take it away, Beverly. Shopping online is a great experience because you can enjoy the same prices as in store. But you also save time by shopping for groceries and other household essentials. These are the steps to shop on the Walmart app from your smartphone. Download the app from the Google Play Store for Android phones and from the Apple Store for iPhone. Tap grocery at the bottom of the screen. Either search for items using the search bar at the top and manually type in the item brand name or search by scanning a barcode. Alternatively, search by using category, example, dairy and egg product. When you found the item, tap on the plus sign, then tap on add to cart. If you need more of the same item, then keep tapping on the plus sign, then add to cart again. Check your cart by tapping on the green cart symbol in the upper right hand corner of your screen. In your cart, you can add additional items or remove items. You also need to indicate whether you want substitution. Just below the card on the left hand side, you must choose pickup or delivery. You enter your name, address, or postal code for a nearby Walmart store. When you have set delivery and pickup info and time, Go to the bottom of your cart and tap check out. In order to check out, you must be signed into a Walmart account. If you do not have an account to sign into, then you can create one by providing your email or phone number and creating a password. Then add payment, credit card, and Walmart gift card or PayPal account. Please note on the app, you will only have to sign in and add payment information once. Upon completion and submission of your order, you will get a confirmation, plus it will also be sent to your email. You must have a minimum of $35 for delivery before taxi. And as a senior, it will be delivered free, but you need to call this number 1-800-328-0042. Option one and one again. Happy online shopping. Thanks so very much for that tour of the Walmart app, Beverly. I'm going to point out one more feature that wasn't mentioned, though. Although Beverly had shown us this example here where we have chicken noodle soup in the search bar, I just wanted to draw your attention to something else that's available in that same search bar. So let's take a closer look. I'll zoom in and I want to draw your attention to what I've circled here in red. This is a barcode scanner which means when you're looking in the pantry in your kitchen, you could pull out those items. Maybe it's craft dinner, maybe it's a can of soup, maybe it's some sort of pasta that you're trying to replace and you can scan the barcode and it will pop up automatically on the screen here so that you can add it to your Walmart cart and have it delivered if that's what you're trying to get done. So I think that that's a really handy feature 
Don't forget that it's going to require you to allow the app to access your camera. So that's going to be normal. If you're going to scan a barcode, then it's going to need access to the camera to do so. And just like any other ordering app on the internet, if you're going to buy something, then please know that you're going to have to have an account for that something. So whether we're talking about the Walmart app or whether we're talking about one of the many other delivery services that we could take advantage of, all delivery apps are going to be requiring an account of some kind and they're going to need us to sign up and include our credit card number saved on file so that we can pay for the things that we've ordered. So whether we're talking about skip the dishes, Uber Eats, Voila's grocery delivery service through Sobeys, or maybe you're talking about grocerygateway.com that works with Longos, or maybe we're just ordering a pizza from Domino's, we're gonna need to sign up for an account with a password and we're going to have to put a credit card number on the account so that we can pay for the thing we're trying to order. But with all that said, let's push on. There's lots more to learn. Press to CAD can make it easier for you to travel across the GTA on GO and TTC buses, trains, as well on other transit agencies. First, purchase the Presto card online. Seniors pay less once ideas shown. The card can be purchased at customer service outlets such as Supper's Drug Mart online, at participating transit outlets and other retailers. To create an account, first, Download the Presto app from your device or visit presto.ca website or call 1-877-378-6123. Tap the app and select the sign up option. Enter all information required, including your email address, home address and cell phone number after which you create a username and password, which will complete creating your account. There are three ways to load your account online. In your app, through a payment method, in person, or by a customer outlet. The simplest way is by setting auto load on your Presto app. Sign into your account and tap on your auto load settings. Select a safe and secure payment method. Set up how much you want auto load to automatically and instantly reload every time your balance get low. No more standing in line. Just get it, load it and use it. How to check your balance? Your balance can be easily checked each time you tap your card on a Presto reader when boarding buses on trains. It can also be checked in the Presto app online. Do you often miss out on a chance to go out because you just can't manage the bus travel? Perhaps becoming a rider with Wheeltrans might help. Wheeltrans is an accessible transit option for Toronto residents. It is a shared ride system, meaning that other passengers will be riding in the vehicle with you. To find out if you qualify for Wheeltrans, you need to make an application. And you can now make your application using their website. You also need a medical form filled out by your healthcare provider. And once you're approved, you get sent a customer number that you then use to book your trips. And you can book them on the phone or you can use the self-booking website on the internet. You're gonna to need to have a Presto card to ride Wheeltrans because they don't take cash. And uh, it's a good job that Jackie just told us all about the Presto app, so we'll be all ready. Coming soon, Wheeltrans is currently testing 
a smartphone app that will allow Wheeltrans users to book, to cancel, or to check on their ride status while we're out and about. Those are just a few of the ways that people are enhancing their travel around the city using their smartphone and different apps and different websites that we have available to us to do so. And there's more of them that we don't really have time today to explore all the way. For instance, we have Lyft and Uber, which are ride request apps where you would sign up for an account, you would set up a password, you'd load your credit card number in it, just like those other apps we were talking about before where we were buying groceries and food online. This time we're ordering transportation, so we need the same sort of system set up. We need an account with a credit card on file so that we can place that order and pay for the ride that we're getting. Or maybe we wanna sign up for a bike share Toronto app account, and now we can borrow a bike to ride around in the city whenever it is we're trying to move around freely. It's completely up to you how you wanna to start to plug into the different transportation options we have today. But there's one thing that's for certain, your smartphone, an app, and an account that identifies you as a unique user that's definitely going to be part of that process. So let's all feel really comfortable and confident doing that. Now, similar to how we're changing our travel arrangements, we're also really changing the way that we're interacting with our doctors and other healthcare professionals as all of these services start to go online very quickly. And it's very clear that smartphones are valuable and convenient tool for us to use while we're navigating this quickly, increasingly digital healthcare system. So if you're keen on being somebody that feels comfortable and confident interacting with your doctor, interacting with the booking systems that are put online for you to start to set yourself up for different appointments, I think you're really gonna get value out of this next topic. Here we are all facing new ways of communicating and connecting with our healthcare professionals. As we all know, with technology, we are shifting from in-office visits to online appointments or phone appointments as often as possible. Our healthcare providers are faced with the same shift and learning as we are. So there may be a learning curve for them and us as we adapt to the new norm. As we know, virtual appointments are here to stay, and we are all expected to know and adapt to the new system. On the other hand, patients are learning to adapt and support themselves. We can help ourselves the next time you are at your doctor's office or speak to the receptionist. Don't be afraid to ask how they will communicate with us, whether by phone or email to book your next appointment. Inquire if there are any app or online portal to support the communication or booking process for future appointments, and if they offer support to set it up. As a rule of thumb, we should always be on the lookout for unknown emails messages, as it may be your doctor's office or a third party company they are using. Time to time, we need our blood tested and other tests to be done at the lab. There are different labs in the city and Life Labs is one of them. I'm going to talk about how to make an appointment at Life Labs on a device by visiting the website lifelabs.com. When you log in, you will see the dashboard with a few options at the top. Now tap on book a lab visit. You will then select the province Ontario. When you log in for the first time, you will need to create an account with the Life Labs. Click on it and fill in your email and the password. This is only one time. 
Now it allows you to book an appointment. Now you will see the hours and access of the labs with a special test and locations. Add your postal code and press find. Nearby Life Labs locations will appear. You can select the desired one for you. Just for your knowledge, only some Life Labs do special tests like ECGs or urea breath tests to name a few. Once you have selected the preferred lab, next a calendar will appear with the available dates and time slots to book an appointment. Book your suitable date and time and all you have to show up for the appointment. Don't forget to wear your mask, take your health card and the requisition with you or your physician may have emailed it directly to the lab. Now to review your test reports, log in and proceed as you already have an account with them. Click on see my results or reports which is on the dashboard at the top of the screen. You can see your results when signed in. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you. If our presentation here today has inspired you to learn more about these and other smartphone functions, please check out the website for more information at www.techcoaches.ca slash DLBE. And while you're there, why not sign up for the Tech Coaches monthly webinars to keep up with your digital education? Hello, everybody. Thanks so very much for tuning into that. Uh, everybody that's a tech tutor, I welcome you to join us right now. Uh, and thanks so much for the tech tutor team and all of the effort that you put in to pull all of that very useful information for everyone together. Uh, we're very appreciative of that. Uh, I just wanted to make it known that uh, I welcome any comments that any of you find tech tutors have about learning about technology. Uh, before we sign off with all these fine folks today. I actually have two comments. The first one is I want everybody to realize that this today, this is just the start of our journey. The Digital Learning Club also was just the start of our journey because as Chris pointed out to us earlier, technology is constantly evolving. And so our learning is going to go on. And the other thing, is I gotta say, just to be silly, have fun, we'll travel. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, Kat. Thank you. Sivajini, you're up, my friend. Yeah. Uh, the Digital Literacy Club classes were very helpful to us in maintaining independence and enhancing our computer and social skills. Thank you, Melinda and Chris, for your patience and guiding us through this process. Thank you. Oh, you're so very welcome, Sivajini. Thanks very much for being so well involved with all of the digital literacy stuff. It's really remarkable to have your assistance. Jackie, I did see you. You're next, my friend. Please feel free to unmute yourself. And then uh, Viola, I'll come to you right after that. To everyone this afternoon, the only way forward is with technology. So why not get on board and enjoy your senior years at the comfort of your own home. So just don't left behind. <laughs> That's a very good point, Jackie. You know, technology keeps moving forward with or without us. Uh, and it's completely up to us to grow the skills ongoing so that we can continue to participate in our digital community. So that's a that's a really great point, Jackie. Thanks so much. Viola, I'm coming to you next, my friend. You go for it. Okay, yeah. Um, thank you all for joining today. Hope you all can make use of the apps. It's so important for us to learn to use them because technology is here to stay. We all need to stay connected. A big thank you to Chris and Melinda, our techno coach. Thanks to the Rexdale team, Wendy and Marilia, for supporting us. 
And once again, thanks again for Chris and Melinda. Uh, I thank you, Viola, and thank everybody over at Rexdale Community Health Center. Wendy, you've been named, Marilia, you've been named as well. Everybody's so very supportive of digital literacy in the Rexdale community, and it's linchpinned on those individuals right there. I also wanted to throw it back to the funder. Thank you very much to the Ontario government and the Seniors Communi uh, Community Grant for getting behind this Digital Literacy Club initiative and for pulling all of this learning together for everybody out there today. Uh, Wendy, I see you coming online. Did you want to add a little something before we wrap up for the day? Just um, reiterating what everyone has said. I mean, first of all, thank you uh, to this wonderful panel for their brilliant, brilliant presentation for, for enthusing us all to learn more and giving us such a comprehensive um, overview of so many areas of digital technology can, that can support us in our health and well-being and how we communicate and socialize and get access to the resources and services that we need. So thank you everyone for taking the time and giving us your knowledge and sharing your knowledge with us to, uh, to help us to, to learn more. And Chris and Melinda, it has been an amazing journey. Uh, working with tech coaches with the two of you in our strategy to enable uh, the digital environment for our seniors and for our community. So we are extremely grateful. And of course, to our funders, uh, the Ministry of Seniors and Accessibility for allowing us the opportunity, the funding to, to create this opportunity. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Too. Yes, thank, thank you, Wendy. And it's, it's truly a pleasure to share digital literacy with anybody with a willingness to learn. So if anyone out there is interested in sharpening their technology acts, so to speak, uh, we, would, we would very much so like to be part of that. Uh, so please uh, stick with us. Melinda has put in the chat the link that Kat had mentioned to you on that last slide, and that's gonna take you over to the resource page so that if you missed some instruction that somebody was providing to you today, we do have it in written format there, very likely. The team has also compiled a grouping of YouTube videos that they thought would be very helpful for you just to have as a reference point to learn some other things. And then finally, there will be a recording of this video put live on the Rexdale Community Health Center website sometime in July. So please watch for that. I'm sure that Wendy's going to share a link with you when it becomes available. Um, with all that, I just wanted to congratulate all of the tech tutors and all of those that have wrapped up with their uh, with their project here. That's exactly what we're working on. This was our last exhibition. And I just wanted to say how proud we are here at Tech Coaches of all of you taking on all of this technology and, and crushing it. Uh, so thank you very much for all of your effort, everyone. I just wanted to wave goodbye to everybody out there in internet land. Thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, we hope to see you again in the near future for another virtual program. That's wonderful.